Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. And uh, I had to say uh, off air here that our expert, uh, Tim Alexander, and he's on now several days a week. <laughs> usually, it's, usually it's a Tuesday, uh, third hour. And on Thursday, third hour, <laughs> uh, that you're such an expert on uh, World War III and Armageddon, you should actually get the URL Armageddonomics. <laughs> because <laughs> it, it, let's put it this way: we are a dragon's breath away from the from the vile cataclysms of of the end of the a- aeon. And it's like this: we're a sixty mile tunnel going through a mountain. You're stra- tied to the rail like the the old you know talkies back in the nineteen tens or twenties. <laughs> And you can hear, you hear the you can hear the the train rumbling, and you can hear the tracks vibrating because they're you're tied to your back, and but you can't see the light of the train yet because it's turning around a corner. <coughs> but that's how close we are. We can hear the oh, rumble. Yeah. I, we can hear the vibration. Uh, on my news blog, uh, Europe, and if you want to find it, folks, uh, Google search or, or Large Sterling Europe. Uh, I wrote, uh, and I, I don't write articles uh, much anymore. I should, but uh, the, I spend so much time on this anyway. Anyway, one second to World War Three is the name of the article, um, and uh, let me read it. it it's real short. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we appear to be moving towards the beginning of military action that will be known as the Third World War, with the Iranian coup junta's mass attack on the Donbass region, home to four and a half million Russians yesterday, that killed over a hundred, including over fifty civilians in their homes, and involved the deliberate deliberate slaughter of wounded separatist troops. My. Things are now at the point that Putin cannot ignore. Right. Late yesterday, Russia once again demanded the immediate end to the Ukrainian junta's war on Russian-speaking citizens. And this was written, by the way, yesterday. So today, Russia is saying that it is, re- that it is receiving a large number of desperate calls from civilians for help. Russia is requesting that the coup junta allow it to provide humanitarian assistance and offering to do so in a reasonable way. It is highly likely that the Ukrainian junta, with its new central bank Zionist oligarch president, will result reject this out of hand. This will result in Russia going in on a humanitarian intervention invasion. Once Russian military forces are tied down in the Ukraine, the massive multinational war games in Jordan and Israel may go hot with intervention in Syria. Remember that the Saudi and American governments are fueling the problem that resulted in the parliament in Lebanon not being able to elect a replacement president of Lebanon. The old one left office two days ago in five attempts. This will complicate any Lebanese diplomatic and military moves to defend its territory from Israeli attacks on Hezbollah missile launch sites. Any Middle East general war will involve massive destructions of weapons and mass. I'm sorry. Any Middle East general war will involve massive use of weapons of mass destruction and with the NATO Russian clashes in Eastern Europe and possible clashes in Asia involving the Chinese and Japanese will go global into the Third World War. The possibilities are getting scarier daily. Yeah. In other words, if you don't have a nauseating uh, sense of doom at the pit of your stomach, you're not human. You've got to have this feeling of an OMG feeling. It's like, like uh, literally since January, I have had horrible insomnia. I'm literally in sackcloth and ashes praying to God late into the night, in the middle of the night sometimes, because what I see coming is so horrendous. And by and large, people are in la-la land. Even the alternative media, they're just not getting at how spiritually evil this is, how it's being engineered. Every single thing has been engineered. Even the presence of Putin being manipulated in these positions. Everything and, is well, being... And the thing is, people don't grasp the horrific nature um, in, in warfare that we've had since the Second World War. This, uh, you know, yeah, civilians always want to fight in their own minds the last war. This will not be World War Two. It won't, and just as World War Two was not World War One, we now have uh, at least three broad categories of weapons of mass destruction: thermonuclear, and most people's understanding of that is rather limited. Uh, ends in the 1960s. Uh, thermonuclear, 
scalar, which most people know nothing about, and that includes weather warfare causing uh, hurricanes, causing yeah. earthquakes, etc. Right. And uh, and then advanced biological, which has the kill wait, wait. potential uh, equal to global thermonuclear warfare, which can include also synthetic life, like bi- biotechnologies, like nanobots. That include all kinds of stuff, like you know, messing with viruses. It could. I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, we may. Uh, we may be enough. We may we, be far enough along to have nanobots. I mean, that which is a fourth. No, I already know category. about it. We talked about it a few weeks ago on another show. So, that, you know, the, the 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 fact is that literally out of the box, we have technology that's in sci-fi movies that they assume is 500 or 1,000 years from now. That's how bad it is. And the problem is, you see, that the powers that be are not run by people with common sense or decency. The powers that be are run by Satan and his minions here. And they're meeting at places like Bilderberger, trying to convince themselves that they're still the, the, the demigods of the world because they control mammon and this artificial this is thing called money. And they well, think they've been given the right of kings. How many billion do you have? And I have ten, and you only have five. And well, you're not you're half as important as me. But, but, but look but, at but, that uh, guy; he's uh, worth twenty uh, trillion. Uh, you know. Well, I we, mean, we have we have God, a different bank account. Their, their money heaven. is their god, and their real god, of course, is Satan. And they're going to spend eternity in hell. Uh, they're kind of to be pitied, to be honest with you. They are are, are pathetic. But they're leading the world into the greatest nightmare in human history. Well, and you had those pictures. Right out you of had the those Bible, pictures, you know? You, you, Tim, you did an amazing service. And I had nightmares over this about these cute little Danbass kids. They went in there after these kids were literally begging them, you know, help us, help us, doing all these selfies and pictures and putting it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, they knew that they were about to get slaughtered. And they knew there wasn't just going to be a battle. There were going to be an asymmetric warfare where the central uh, junta was going to sit on uh, cal- helicopter gunships and, uh, and big armor personnel carriers and tanks. They're going to give them with high powered weapons. And they're going to be killing civilians. They'll be shelling. They'll be doing things just like you did in Georgia. I recommend it uh, uh, to my readers that uh, if you live in the Ukraine or that area of Europe that you consider taking a a summer vacation now. In other words, get the hell out of Dodge. Right. I think if they don't get out of there, it's going to be catastrophic. And I think there has to be a certain amount of bloodshed for Putin to be, quote, legally justified and morally so his own people will think of him as a hero rather than as an opportunist. Well, just and, uh, today, a Ukrainian transport helicopter was down, uh, 14 dead, including a major general. Now, uh, you keep in mind in this, the old Soviet system, which the Ukraine follows and Russia follows, a major general is not a two-star general, he's a one-star. They have what they call colonel general, which is two-star, then a lieutenant general, three-star, and then a four-star general. But uh, anyway, uh, 14 dead. But... The latest estimates uh, out of Russia, and, and uh, they, they've been pretty uh, reliable, is there are somewhere between 1,200 and 1,300 Ukrainian junta uh, soldiers have been killed since this uh, nightmare began about in March, and uh, they've lost uh, uh, eight helicopters at least. Uh, 15 armored vehicles, uh, and this is basically centered around their special operations. Uh, in, yeah, you're, uh, you're talking about the junta government with the sector right yes. and my dime yes. parties and these neo Nazis. Yeah, well, you know, neo Nazis is, 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 is such a joke because uh, uh, the reality is uh, the newly uh, elected president is a central banker and is Jewish on both sides of his family, as uh-huh. is the prime minister. He was a central banker and Jewish. And so you have this. What a this, coincidence. Uh, I can't believe yeah, it. I know. I mean, it's, it's, I'll it's, tell you what. Just with that kind of. Who would have thunk it? But, yeah, that's right. You know, you know, he's the kind of guy with that kind of luck, he should get some lotto tickets. Yeah, well, when we come back, I've got a little information on the new president. Uh, uh, it's, he, it's called the Chocolate King, but it's really all about weapons, prostitution, and drugs. He doesn't make little bunnies. He does other <laughs> things. Weapons, mass destruction, prostitution. Good things. Make the big money. We've been here before. Of course. Well, Tim, um, in this next segment, let's talk about some of the other things, because I think what, what's oh, I going on now... I to tell you about the billionaire, uh, the uh, uh, Prusenko. Can I do that uh, for a minute? 
Yeah, well, absolutely. It's your, it's your uh, you know segment here. Well, yeah, okay. But, the, the Western media, mainstream news, has called him the Chocolate King because he owns a a company that makes chocolate and sells it uh, in Eastern Europe. Now. <laughs> Uh, the reality is he ran the Ukrainian Central Bank, which was tied into the rotten Rothschild Empire Central Banks. Uh, he's a hardcore Zionist, uh, likely with dual Israeli citizenship. Um, he, and let me read uh, from a, uh, an article I link here. Uh, billionaire Prusinko started his business by laundering the money of Soviet uh, Times administrators. He has never been an entrepreneur to start a business of, a, of his own. That story is invented. He made a head start thanks to the criminal connections of his father, sentenced for large-scale theft in 1986. Having served this sentence, Prasenko Sr. launched his own business, making his son involved in the activities. The business was sturdy. It started with plundering state property by armed gangs. The Prasenko family had plans to extend their activities well beyond the Ukraine. Um, Tatalina uh, Molikan, a well-known key-based lawyer, remembers what the family did in Transtanasia, uh, and it was back in the, it was horrible back in the 1990s. Illegal arms, prostitutes, drugs, all bringing father to uh, profits to father and son. By the way, when they say prostitutes, it's usually and, and this has happened a lot uh, in the far from Soviet Union. Uh, it's young uh, gals, uh, 18 to maybe 25, that are forced into prostitution. A lot of them end up in Israel, uh, but a lot of them have been tra- trafficked all over the world. Uh, they're, I mean, it's prostitution is terrible. But to take an innocent woman and to force her into that and to have sex with 20 or 30 strangers a day is is beyond terrible. Well, anyway, this is the delightful individual who has been yeah. quote unquote elected president. And by the way, when I make the comments of what he said, he's going to do to the Donbass people. These little kids that put all these selfies up to say, "Please don't let them slaughter us." Yeah. This is he, what, what has he said that he's going to do to all these people, the Donbass. What is he going to do? Uh, he's going to eradicate the terrorist. And again, mm-hmm. this is uh, this is yeah. a this is Israeli term for anybody speak for. that opposes. Uh, yeah, uh, if, you're, if you oppose the, if you oppose Mr. Chocolate Bunny King, who's Mr. Prostitute uh, Thug, uh, he's going to kill you. In other words, opposition means you're the terrorist because you oppose my will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, I, I could go on and on about this, but uh, this is this, this is the kind of individual that the United States government and the NATO other NATO nations have pushed. This was their choice to this be is their quote, fuzzy warm quote, guy. elected. Listen, Obama, when he even mentions Poroshenko's name, he gets this fuzzy glow that goes from his toes to his large uh, <laughs> purple lips and to his quivering bone-like fingers of, you know, uh, you know the, the Nightmare Before Christmas, you know, Jack Skellington. I think that he should really try out for the part. He's a, he's a scary guy, Obama. When he gets a warm, fuzzy feeling and says all the positive things about this wonderful new guy that's elected, rather than selected this thug, we're really in trouble. And and I can tell you with this kind of leader, this is the kind of leader that, that makes God so mad that he's going to judge our nation and crush us. America is well, really going to take yeah. it. If we, if we continue to allow this guy to even operate one more day, putting one more executive order or stamping one more horrendous policy what into existence. What people need to do, and there, there are limits to what we can do peacefully, but what we need to do and, and, and do it peacefully is we need to begin putting pressure on the clowns that sit in Congress and the Senate. Now, well, with the, uh, yeah, the I go higher than that. I, go to, I, got, it's, I put it's pressure difficult. But I we should pressure, make their I'm, lives miserable. Any place they show yeah. up to speak, yeah. we should be there and yeah, but, challenge them and challenge their lies and, yeah. and, and, but, but, and get in their face and say, look what you've done to this country, you bum, you but, damn crook, you evil so-and-so. That's and true, but you know right what, besides doing that, those are the visible yeah. minions. But what we also have to do is is track down and do what we call a chain of, of evil, 
back to the corporations, the transnational corporations that have seized every country on earth. It's yeah, the transnational but who controls them? It's 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 thirty families, and and out of that thirty at the apex, eight families, and at the extreme apex, the Rothschilds. It's a yeah. very small group of 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 individuals who are satanic to the core. And, you know, how many, uh, you're, you're talking hundreds of people, and they're extended uh, uh, people at the top, a few tens of thousands. And there's, what, seven plus billion people on this planet. Why do we tolerate it? Well, uh, we need to, and, I'll tell you why we tolerate it. We tolerate it because they have Bilderberg meetings where they try to convince us that we should be fearful, be very fearful, because these guys are going to do policies. Or they're trying to convince each other they're still in control when they know these billionaires know and they wake up with nightmares in a cold sweat. Huh, I lost a billion dollars yesterday. My nightmare said I'm going to lose ten today. Oh, I better go to that builder well, meeting. I'll tell you what really say, gives Tell me what I'm going to do to protect sweat. my money. That's what no, I'll, I'll tell you. What really gives them cold sweats is the people waking up. Oh yeah. When they if they oh, listen George to programs Bush like this, Senior said, if the people ever realize what we do have done, they chase us down the streets and hang us. Well, I'm sure that, that was before the French Bush number one said that. Yeah, I'll bet it's a, it's an echo of the French Revolution when they said, you know, that sharpen the blade of the guillotine because once the public, the French public, understands in the French Revolution, they will have the guillotine sharpened and the heads of the royals will fly through the air like Marie Antoinette. Well, e even if they're not sharp, you can you know you can whack them a couple times with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to, to touch, there was an article I linked that I think is really good. It, it refers to the uh, the Great Earthquake, and I, I renamed it the Great UK Political Earthquake. Uh, um, you mean the one uh, where the uh, UKIP parties in Europe, you mean? Yeah, the, the UK Independence Party right. uh, has suddenly become a major player in Britain. But uh, I, there are two even greater earthquakes to come. The first will be uh, this fall when the Scots vote to become independent. And unless uh, the economic depression ends before then in the UK, the Scots are almost certain to, be, to vote mm. to become independent. That will end the United Kingdom. There will only be England uh, with the little rump, the state of Northern uh, Ireland, and maybe Wales, but Wales will almost certainly break away shortly thereafter. Uh, secondly, uh, the next year uh, in 2015 is the general elections. And the three major parties now, the conservatives, the, the uh, Labour and the Liberal Democrats, Lib Dems as they call them, are so hated across the board because people have finally in the UK woken up. It doesn't matter who we put in. We have Blair, we have Brown, we have uh, Caroon, and we have the Lib Dems as number two and all this. They still get the same thing. It's all about the super elite. It's all yeah. about, you know, and, and their economy is, it, it is worse than here. Oh, I know. I mean, the people in Britain, the average person lives just a hair's breadth above third world. Well, I think uh, Nigel will end up as the new prime minister. Mm, interesting. The IUP, uh, the I, uh, or the Independent Party. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.